Hello and welcome to Perception Media. I am your host, The Cynic Geek, and today I would like to talk about Back to the Future, specifically the semi-plot holes, not plot holes in Back to the Future 2. So, Back to the Future 2 starts off with Doc and Marty going into the future to 2015 where they are on a mission to stop Marty Jr. from committing a crime that ends up with Marty's entire family kind of imploding. And they're relatively successful, uh, but while they're doing this, uh, Biff, who is now an elderly man, steals the DeLorean and goes back in time to 1955, the night of the Great Hill Valley Thunderstorm and the Enchantment Under the Sea Dance, where he gives a younger version of himself the Sports Almanac so that he can bet on these sports events that he now knows the outcome to, to amass a fortune, which he does. And a lot of people at this point say, how does Biff, elderly Biff, who stole the Lorian, go from the 1955 to 2015? And I argue that it actually does make sense that he's able to do this. It's not really a plot hole. And I would say that because the argument is that he, that the effects of him changing the timeline would ripple through and kind of make a different 2015. This is both true and untrue. So we've seen in the past that uh, when Doc and Marty change things, like in Back to the Future 1, uh, the past does cause the future to alter. When Marty arrives at the end of Back to the Future 1 to 1985, he finds his family is wealthier, they're healthier. I did not mean for that to rhyme, I apologize, that was bad. Um, his parents have different jobs, they seem a lot happier, his, as do his siblings. They have a car, Biff's basically their servants, which is weird, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but they live in the same house. Lorraine and George still got married. They still have the same kids at, you know, the same ages and stuff. So some things, yes, are different, but just not that different. Um, when Doc and Marty go from 2015 back in time to 1985, that is now the dystopian Biff ruled in 1985, Lorraine and George still got married. They still had the same kids. They do live in a different house in that George was killed by Biff and Lorraine lives with Biff as his wife. But again, only some things are changed. And it looks like the things that are changed are really directly impacted by the actions the characters are taking. Like, there's no ripple effect. Like in the movie The Butterfly Effect, how altering one thing can cause like things all over the place to change. That's not how Back to the Future is really doing it. And I would say that really good example of that in Back to the Future 1 with Johnny B. Good. Uh, Marvin, oh god, what's his name? <laughs> Marvin Berry calls his cousin Chuck Berry and hasn't listened to Johnny B. Good. And that kind of sets up this idea of like destiny or predestination in that some things that kind of have to happen will happen regardless. And the timeline will kind of force certain events to take place and to line up and some things will just pretty much always be. Even though these other little things are kind of changing, some things are just kind of more definite. And when the characters are kind of directly affecting something important like that, time still has a way of causing things to kind of happen. And I'm such a nerd, I read the uh, comic books because they're Bob Gale is working with someone and he actually is making comic books for Back to the Future. And so volume three, who is Marty McFly, which I think is the best one, does bring up this notion of predestination, why Marty's having kind of a breakdown, trying to figure out like who he is in this timeline scenario. So the, and that, since Bob Gale did it, it is canon. So in this idea of the Back to the Future verse, there is a notion of destiny and predestination and things kind of having to happen a certain way. And like I said, so whenever the character, because I'm going off on a tangent, um, when the characters do something, the only things that are affected are really minute and direct. So there's not like this ripple effect. So I think that makes it possible for the back, the Biff from 1955 to go to the 2015 because of the night that he went back. He went back the night of the Hill Valley thunderstorm. Doc is already 
met Marty from the future. Doc has already seen that he has made a DeLorean. He's already seen that he has invented time travel. He already knows certain things are going to happen regardless. So it easily sets up this idea that those things are going to happen and it makes it completely possible that Doc still does make the time machine, that that still would have existed and that two, either of those 2015s would have been able to steal and use. That still makes it plausible for Marty to know Doc because Doc probably would have made a point to meet him and get to know him maybe sooner than he had originally in the most original timeline where uh, again Bob Gale said that uh, Marty met Doc when I think he was 15 and he broke into his lab so all these things still could happen because Doc was already aware of them had Biff gone uh, back in time before those events like before uh, when was it like November 8th had he gone back to like October 1955, then it would be very plausible that none of these events happened and it wouldn't make sense to any of this. It would all be a paradox. But because he went back on the night of the thunderstorm tonight, Marty went back to 1985 because Doc was already aware of these things happening, of everyone's existence, of everything that he was capable of. It makes it possible for that 2015 that Biff returned to to be very similar to the one that he left. So because, you know, maybe Marty was meant to marry Jennifer and they were meant to have Marty Jr. and Marlene. And by the way, Michael J. Fox looks pretty cute as a girl, which is weird. <laughs> um, because those things may be meant to happen. They were meant to live in that neighborhood despite uh, any differences in their pasts. Uh, those things could still be that way, like, like on a destiny meant to happen scale, as I mentioned earlier. So... Other things might be different, but since those are the characters and that's what we're focused on, we didn't maybe didn't notice any difference because in his family unit, there wasn't much of a difference to have. Um, yeah, so I think in general, you know, when people say those things didn't need to happen, uh, it makes sense that they do. And it does make sense that Back to the Future happened at all because a lot of people kind of say, well, why, why not just tell Marty because then the actions that he takes are going to change the future anyway, so why go into the future at all? And again, it comes back to the whole destiny thing and predestination and time itself making decisions of its own accord, which would be really creepy. <laughs> um, so Doc and Marty prevent Marty Jr. from going to jail and have Biff, uh, God, Griff, sorry, Griff, um, in his place. Well, what if time, like I've been saying, could alter the past to make it align with the future so that the, a paradox wouldn't occur? That'd be creepy, but kind of cool if you think about it. So Doc and Marty make this change in the future and then they go back, back to 1985 and then all other shenanigans, but they end up back in 1985 at the very, very end. <laughs> So at this point, now all they need to do, like time itself will create its own little ripple that will ensure that Griff is the one that goes to jail instead of Marty Jr., even if no other time travel exists, and even if uh, Marty and Jennifer don't consciously take any kind of consideration into how they're raising their kids and do any kind of thing different than how their alternate selves did. Time itself will ensure that those actions take place and that Griff ends up in jail as he had, which is kind of out there. I didn't see anything in the comic that suggested that, but I just, it's just kind of, it really comes back to that. I'm hinging a lot on the, um, the fact that a lot of the times they lived in the same house and a lot of the times that, uh, that they had the same kids and the fact that Marvin Berry called Shrek Berry, and it just seems in in the context of the storyline that things kind of stay very similar. And so that maybe time itself is causing certain things to happen. That time itself in this story is a character that we're just not seeing and that is heavily influencing certain things. 
which is a cool notion. Don't know if it's true or not, but it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I like the idea that, that, that it all makes sense and there's no loopholes in the Back to the Future because it's really hard to do time travel. So, yeah, that's basically my idea. Feel free to insert your own ideas or if you think I'm, like, super wrong or if you see another plot hole, I really like coming up with theories that insinuate that Back to the Future is a movie with absolutely no plot holes. And I'm sticking to that. Anyway, I've been the Cine Geek. Thank you for watching and we need a Moon Knight movie. Have a good day.